Frame, Frame Semantics, and FrameNet. The first step to understand these three concepts is answering the question, what is a frame? Charles J. Fillmore offers this answer. By the term frame, I have in mind any system of concepts related in such a way that to understand any of them, you have to understand the whole structure in which it fits. And he continues, when one of the things in such a structure is introduced into a text or into a conversation, all of the others are automatically made available. Let's think about an example. In English, we have the words land and ground, which can be a bit tricky for non-native speakers. Land designates the part of the earth which is not covered by water in contrast to the sea. On the other hand, ground designates the surface on the earth in contrast to the air above it. The semantic difference between land and ground are a result of the difference in the frames they evoke. Following Fillmore, if a bird spends its life on the land, we know this bird does not spend any time in the water. On the flip side, a bird that spends its life on the ground is a bird that cannot fly. So, frames are schematic representations of concepts. They are scenes that relativize the meaning of words, sentence, or any linguistic material. Those scenes are available to human beings for three reasons. First, we are humans and live where humans live. Then, we know things about pain, gravity, shadows, and the human face. Second, we belong to some culture. So, we know stuff about marriage, school, money, and sports. Third, we know how to use and understand the words in our language. Fumo defined frame semantics as a research program in empirical semantics and a descriptive framework for presenting the results of such research. By research program, he had in mind a principled theoretical foundation that could guide several initiatives focused on analyzing meaning. By using empirical, he highlighted the fact that those analyses should benefit from corpus analysis. Finally, when he mentioned a descriptive framework, he wanted to explore some way to organize and share the resulting data. And what about FrameNet? FrameNet is the computational implementation of the descriptive framework proposed for frame semantics. It started as a computational lexicographic project led by Fumer himself back in 1997 at the International Computer Science Institute in Berkeley, California. In FrameNet, frames are schematic representations of human experiences, which can be events, entities, relations, or attributes, for example. They involve different types of participants, props, and other conceptual roles each of which is a frame element. In principle, creating a frame requires a lexicographic motivation. It means that decisions are guided by the semantic and the syntactic properties lexical items show when using a sentence. Of course, another motivation for creating frames is the need to cover how some specific domain of knowledge is referred to in a language. Let's see how it works. Take a look at these two sets of lexical units, or LUs. Commission, the noun. Commission, the verb. Contract, the verb. Give job, idiomatic expression. Hire, the verb. Retain, verb. Sign on, verb. And sign, verb. And discharge, verb. Dismiss, verb. Dismissal, noun. Downsigns, verb. Fire, Verb, firing, noun, give the boot, verb, lay off, noun. We know that the two groups deal with the employment event. In FrameNet, these LUs are grouped into two frames, hiring and firing. The hiring frame is defined as an employer hires an employee promising the employee a certain compensation in exchange for the performance of a job. The job may be described either in terms of a task or a position. Let's take a look at an example from the FrameNet corpus. So, they've hired you for 30 pence a mile to do their road work for them. In turn, 
The fighting frame is defined as an employer ends an employment relationship with an employee. There is often a behavior of the employee that motivates the firing, a reason, or some more general explanation given for the action. Now, an example. I'll fire him after the speedboat race is over. Now take a look at these other values. Hire on verb and sign on verb. Quit verb and retirement noun. In FrameNet, the first two LUs are grouped under the Get a Job frame, and the later two LUs evoke the Quitting frame. Now, what did you notice about these frames? We know for sure that all these frames are part of the employment experience. However, at the same time, there are distinctions that are accounted for by FrameNet. While hiring and firing take the employer's perspective, the get a job and the quitting frames take the employee's point of view. As we saw, there is a linguistic motivation for such a distinction. And this is so because different words adopt different framings. So, get a job and quitting are said to be subframes of the employee scenario. The scenario also includes the being employed frame. Similarly, hiring and firing together with employing are subframes of the employer scenario. The employer scenario and the employee scenario frames are two perspectives on a broader frame, the employment scenario. Additionally, those frames tend to follow a chronological order. First, someone gets a job. Then, this person spends some time being employed and finally quits. Frames from other domains can also be brought into play. This is the case of fields, a frame that groups LUs indicating areas, sectors or industries where people can work. Remember that FrameNet is not a list of frames, but a network of frames linked by different types of relations. FrameNet uses such a network of frames as a model of linguistic cognition to account for how the meaning of lexical units is instantiated in language use. Later on, it also accounts for other sorts of linguistic structures such as constructions. Today, the original FrameNet initiative has more than 1,200 frames in its database and about 14,000 lexical units. More than 8,000 LUs are lexicographically annotated based on English corpus data. Nowadays, FrameNets have been built for many other languages than English, including Japanese, German, Spanish, Swedish, Brazilian Portuguese, Chinese, French, Hebrew, Korean, Latvian. Now that you know the FrameNet basics, you're ready to start using Lutma to add LUs to existing frames, creating your own frames, or even starting a brand new FrameNet for your new language. So, let's do it!